Number 8. Chris Ojeda In June of 2018, New Jersey man Chris Ojeda invited friends and relatives to his Somerset home for a triple celebration that included his birthday, Father's Day and a gender reveal for his unborn child. A stunt regarding the latter involved 34-year-old Ojeda kicking a football filled with dye that was meant to reveal if he was going to have a boy or a girl. The guests had gathered in the garden and began filming the stunt. With a beer in one hand and sunglasses on his eyes, Ojeda kicked off his flip-flops and stepped up to the ball. He struck it and a pink cloud of smoke filled the air as guests exclaimed, It's a girl! The celebratory atmosphere lasted but a moment as after kicking the ball, Ojeda slipped and fell backwards on his foot, which bent at an awkward angle. He was left writhing in agony on the ground as his pregnant wife and other guests rushed to his aid. Ojeda, who'd heard several crunching sounds as he landed on his kicking foot, was helped to a chair and the pain he experienced reportedly got so intense that his vision became blurry. His wife took him to the hospital where doctors would tell him that he'd broken his ankle. Ojeda, who'd come up with the idea for the gender reveal, was forced to stay off his injured leg for several weeks. Number 7. Texas Plane Crash on September the 7th of 2019, a plane crashed in Turkey, Texas while the pilot was carrying out an elaborate stunt as part of a gender reveal for a friend. The identities of those involved haven't been disclosed but the aircraft was owned and operated by Horan Spraying Service, a crop dusting business based in Plainview. The one-seat plane was flying at a low altitude and stalled following the release of about 350 gallons of pink water. It crashed into the ground, sustained considerable damage and came to a stop inverted. Fortunately, the pilot and passenger survived the crash with minor injuries. There were no prior mechanical faults with the plane and a National Transportation Safety Board report concluded that the aircraft simply got too slow and unbalanced following the water discharge. Number 6. Pamela Crimea 56-year-old Pamela Crimea died in October of 2019 after being hit with shrapnel from an explosion involving an improvised device meant to be used during a gender reveal. The party was held at Crimea's residence in Marion County, Iowa, for her son Brad and his girlfriend, Kirsty Rankin. The family had placed colored powder, along with gunpowder, into a metal tube that was welded to a metal base. A piece of wood separated the two powders and the hole had been drilled into the side of the tube for a fuse. The family expected that their improvised stand would function like a cannon, with the gunpowder ignited and pushing the dye through the top of the tube, which had been covered with tape. They had hoped to post the reveal on social media for other loved ones to see. The party took a tragic turn as the contraption ended up functioning like a pipe bomb. The blast obliterated the tube and base, sending metal fragments flying at great speed. One of the shards struck Crimea in the head, even though she was 45 feet from the blast zone. She died on the spot and the projectile that hit her flew for another 144 yards before landing in a nearby field. Sheriff Jason Sandholt expressed his condolences to the family but also offered the incident as a reminder to members of the public of how dangerous homemade explosives can be. Number 5. Autumn Garrett On July the 8th of 2017, a mass shooting occurred at a house in Coleraine, Ohio. During a gender reveal party, held for 21-year-old Cheyenne Willis. About a dozen guests had stayed into the night to watch a Spider-Man movie. At around 11 p.m., two gunmen burst into the capstan drive home and opened fire on those inside. At least 14 bullets flew through the living room before the attackers fled. Eight people and a dog were injured while Willis's cousin, 22-year-old Autumn Garrett, was shot dead. Willis was shot in the thigh and, in the aftermath, reported that she'd suffered a miscarriage. The authorities would face difficulty in piecing together the context and circumstances surrounding the shooting, as many witnesses had given them false leads. In fact, Willis would also reveal that in spite of her initial statements, she was never pregnant. It's unclear why she'd lied and held what was essentially a fake gender reveal party. Investigators connected a number of survivors to drug activity, but fatal victim Garrett, a young mother from Indiana and her husband, who was among those injured, didn't have such affiliations and were only guests. Law enforcement eventually found that Willis had been the target but concluded that the gunman had opened fire with the intention of killing everyone inside. Willis had become the focus of a murder-for-hire plot orchestrated by Roshan Bishop, aged 28. 
who was already in custody on drug trafficking charges at the time of the shooting. He enlisted the help of a man named Vandell Slade, who produced two shooters for hire from Columbus. They were identified as James Eccles and Michael Sannon, both in their early 20s, and Slade had reportedly been the one to drive the shooters to the residence. All four men were charged in the aftermath of the shooting with murder and attempted murder. Prior to the attempt on her life, Willis had been the target of another violent attack. On Christmas Eve 2014, she was assaulted by another woman in a parking lot, and the attacker, who claimed Willis had stolen her car, wrote an explicit confirmation of the beatdown on her forehead in permanent marker. The altercation was filmed and the clip went viral, but the charges against the attacker were eventually dropped after Willis failed to show up for court. Number 4. Incendiary Burnout in 2019, law enforcement from Australia's Queensland state released drone footage of a vehicle that had erupted in flames as part of a warning against burnouts, an increasingly popular trend among people looking to make an impression with their gender reveal parties. The cars are rigged to emit clouds of either blue or pink smoke, but the stunts can often end in disaster. As demonstrated in the footage shared by the authorities, the incident had occurred on April the 18th of 2018. At first, the reveal had gone as planned, with guests celebrating as they filmed the car driving down the road engulfed in blue smoke. Shortly after coming to a stop, however, it caught fire, forcing the driver and other guests to flee for their lives. It kept burning in the middle of the road as thick smoke, which from blue had turned to black, rose into the air. A spokesman for the Queensland Police Service told the media that, as a result of the incident, a 29-year-old man was convicted of dangerous operation of a motor vehicle. Number 3. Christopher Peckney In February of 2021, expecting father Christopher Peckney from New York was killed in an explosion by a contraption he'd been building for the gender reveal of his unborn child. 28-year-old Peckney had been assembling the device, which reportedly contained a pipe in his garage alongside his brother, Michael. Both men were described by other family members as mechanically gifted. The nature of the gender reveal invention wasn't specified by the authorities, but some have speculated that in trying to build a device that would release smoke or fireworks, Peckney had inadvertently created a pipe bomb. The police, responding to reports of an explosion, arrived at the residence in the Catskills town of Liberty. The blast had killed Peckney instantly and injured Michael, who was rushed to the hospital and treated for severe injuries to his legs, with medical staff essentially having to rebuild one of his knees. Today's topic was requested by Instagram follower, Nicety K50 Life Family Coach and 1965 Fly Girl. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below or follow us on Instagram and reach out to us there. Number 2. Gender Reveal in Philadelphia In 2018, a video started circulating on YouTube of a gender reveal party that went wrong in Philadelphia. The clip was even featured on the New York Post's channel, but the identities of those involved weren't made public. An expecting couple lit the fuse and some firework tubes with the color of the pyrotechnics expected to indicate the gender of their unborn child. Some commenters were quick to point out the couple's poor decision-making as they'd chosen to set the fireworks off from a wobbly clothes rack. Soon enough, several were launched into the sky, but the tremor from their ignition had caused others to topple over from their unsteady support. Panicked screaming erupted as the pyrotechnics started flying into the partygoers. The footage would show several of them, including the camera handler, fleeing in an effort to escape the barrage of hot sparks. Fortunately, none of the children in attendance were hurt and only a few adults suffered minor burns. Number 1. Sawmill Fire In April of 2017, a wildfire burned through nearly 47,000 acres in the state of Arizona and its origin was traced to a gender reveal stunt. While not the only massive blaze linked to such a party, the sawmill fire as it came to be known is believed to have been the first. On April the 23rd, as part of the gender reveal celebrations, off-duty US Border Patrol agent Dennis Dickey shot at a target packed with a highly explosive substance called Tannerite in the Coronado State Forest. He missed the first few times but hit it on the fourth shot triggering blue smoke and a fireball. The surrounding grass was instantly ignited, and Dickey reportedly tried to put it out but couldn't because of how rapidly the blaze was spreading. He contacted the authorities and cooperated with them, 
after taking responsibility for the fire. Conditions of unusually low precipitation for the region and winds of up to 40 miles per hour contributed to its rapid expansion. The fire burned for 11 days and ravaged terrain in spite of initial interventions from five air tankers and three helicopters carrying water. Containing and extinguishing it took the combined efforts of over 800 personnel from local, state and federal agencies. No one was hurt and no buildings were damaged, but suppressing the sawmill fire cost an estimated $8.2 million. Dickey pleaded guilty to the charge of starting a fire without a permit. He was sentenced to five years probation and ordered to pay $200,000 in restitution. In November of 2018, under the Freedom of Information Act, the Arizona Daily Star obtained the initial video of Dickey shooting the explosive target. The footage circulated and was mocked by online users, some of whom also ridiculed the concept of gender reveal parties. Thanks for watching. As an expecting parent of sex tuplets, would you rather have six boys or six girls and why? Let us know in the comments section below.